Thank you, Dan. Hi, I'm Mary Selk, and I'm an Albany resident and have been using the library since it was on Solano in that little building on Solano, which it outgrew because there were too many books and too many patrons who wanted to read all those books. So I'm really sad to know about the weeding, in my opinion, the overweeding, that's taken, uh, I'd rather have big piles of books than see empty shelves, frankly. And um, I don't think it's a good service to our community to strip the shelves so that there's spaciousness. I think that there's plenty of room, there's plenty of room in the building. And I particularly think that the process that, that our wonderful librarians and our community should be part of the process that decides which books stay and which go. And clearly there should be some record of what books have been pulled off the shelves. The other thing I want to mention is that I understand, I believe this is correct, that the New York Public Library was planning because it had such a valuable building, putting most of its collection out of the reach of the public and replacing it with coffee shops and meeting rooms so that people would have a more pleasant afternoon. And eventually they were persuaded by the book reading public not to do that. There are so many reasons in our present culture that people don't read, or if they read, they read on iPads, and they don't read actual books. I live a block from the library, and I probably take out five books a week. I love books, and so every time you pull a book, I mean, in Imogene Cunningham is a hero of mine, and she comes from California. Mm -hmm. So those are not the kind of books that should be dumped out of our collection. So thank you for bringing this to the floor, everybody who did. I just wanted to come to identify yourself. So, oh yes, Catherine Taylor. That's one of the reasons I came back. I didn't do a very good job the first time. Um, Catherine Taylor, and so I've been coming to this library for well over 20 years, and I do have an association with the libraries. I coordinate the, the poetry series here. Um, I did truly come having heard from heard little bits of things from various people and I, I did want to keep it fairly low key because I'm I'm was truly perplexed. I came to become more informed. I think people are raising a lot of good questions. I think there's a lot of lack of understanding about weeding processes. What was interesting as I went around, you know, asking friends of mine, a couple of scholarly friends who um, for example, one person who is a, 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 a U.S. historian of early American literature just was like so blasé that, and I was like saying, I've never heard this word before, weeding. And he said, well, oh yeah, you know, it was like he said it was happening all around him the whole time he was working on his PhD um, at places all over the country. And that it's just constantly done as part of upkeep and so none of this shocked him. I don't know if like more has been done suddenly and if there's some reason for that. But you know, I'll just add that to the list of questions. And I think there's a lot of good questions. The problem is that it's just really highly emotional here. And I feel like I'm at two separate meetings. And one is of some really big staff problems that I didn't understand existed. And for the most part, I would say that is to the credit of the library that my friends and neighbors and family have been coming and going, and they've not known about these meetings. And when I mentioned that, you know, this meeting tonight, you know, people are busy with their lives. I think there is a huge population that's not represented here at all, and I don't, I don't know. I, at any rate, the community I know is there get that because I've asked very specifically, are you? Getting books that you need, um, you know, some people are saying they're not finding the books that they need, that sort of thing. Yes, you know, I always call that if they don't have it, they bring it in. I'm hearing now that people are having problems. That concerns me. I feel concerned. I feel mostly distressed by the level of emotions here and the vitriol. And, you know, it's just very distressing because my contact with everyone, including, you know, our newly hired director has been really positive, really positive, with 
really the best of intentions for our community and what we need at heart. And I agree with the, the two younger women who talked that we really need to identify community. And I feel that, you know, these are the kind of questions I want answered. Like, who are we serving? Who are these, the, the people who are silent, who are either satisfied or maybe they do need to know a little bit more or maybe weeding has been done differently in the past? Thank you. Okay, so understanding what weeding is, what our community is and how they're represented. And please, people, please, please try to work together and communicate. And rather than meeting in small, separate little groups, maybe you need some mediated things or something that I sincerely like and appreciate so many of the people here, including people who've been very upset. And yeah. Okay. My name's Andrew Siegel, as I said earlier. But I just want to make a, a brief reference to the young women who spoke. I appreciate your comments, and actually, um, I worked as a librarian for a long, long time, and one of the big achievements when I was working was when computers came in, and we used them, we were so happy to have them, to help with the weeding process. That's part of the weeding process. It's a wonderful tool that we never had before, so it's great to be able to go to the shelves and see what has circulated, when it last circulated, how many times, look at condition, look at similar things. But a lot of what the people here have come in to say is that the way, the speed at which materials here were taken out of the library showed that there was no way that you could really do all of that, what you're, what, exactly what you're describing in that kind of a careful way, all the things that computers will provide. So that's, that's part of what this is about. And I mean, I hope you will look into these types of processes and things in the future in your studies. Um, it's, it's not that librarians here, just because we're older than you, are saying we hate computers and don't want to use them. But what happened was, you know, I would use the library and I'd come in and see that suddenly all of these books were gone at, at such a speed. I weeded collections my whole life. Um, I see kind of uh, looking askance at me over there. I think you know, as well, people who work in libraries, that you can't get rid of that many books that quickly if you're really doing it carefully and looking at the statistics, seeing what can be replaced, what can't be, what needs to be repaired. So that's part of the process of weeding. No, we were here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we're not supposed to. Okay. We're on cross Pardon. That's kind of not what we're trying to do. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Again, I'm Pam Ferguson. Um, I want to first say thank you again to every single person who came, whether or not we, some of us are in agreement, especially the young people because this is everyone's library, and we don't hear enough about what the young people want. Now we have. One of the things this meeting has accomplished is that a wider group of people, whether or not they feel that there's a controversy, know more about some of who's coming here. I also want to acknowledge the friends of the library, the people who tirelessly go out, collect the books that they can, and sell or give away so that the public, both financially and in spirit, and support us. And I want to emphasize that the reason it sounds like two meetings is that there have been a number of other meetings. We've made every effort to include anyone who turns up. Our first meeting with the library board back about four months ago had six people from the public. The second meeting had roughly ten people from the public and the staff. So part of the frustration that you're hearing is the repeated attendance of these meetings and not hearing some very clear and simple answers to clear and simple questions. Well, tonight we've got over 60 people here. And I want to use my time to invite those of you that want more information and, and a clear and conscientious approach to stay in touch with staff and to have a voice as the Albany community in your books to attend our next meeting so that you know about it. It's October 15th, Wednesday, 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to do our best to, to remind people. I have a sign-up list if you would like to be notified. It will be a short and, and intensive meeting with all points of view to try to find a 